Wherever you turn in Vietnam, someone is selling something. But even around the thriving markets, there are reminders of the war that ended 35 years ago. Kids and adults affected by the herbicide Agent Orange. In Ho Chi Minh City, we ran into Van Dam, visiting from Dublin, California. During the war, his family lived in Bien Hoa, where his father was a pilot with the South Vietnamese military, fighting alongside the U.S. against the communists. He saw Agent Orange pouring from the skies. A few weeks later, the leaves fell. And that was strange for us because we live in a tropical environment. American forces dumped about 20 million gallons of herbicides on South Vietnam between 1962 and 1971. Back then, U.S. officials insisted the chemicals were safe, and some soldiers didn't even bother to wear any protective gear when they sprayed it on the ground. But when Dom's five-year-old brother died of cancer, his family grew suspicious. To this day, my mom blamed it on uh, really the chemical that my little brother was exposed to. Dom and his family fled when Saigon fell to the communists in 1975. The U.S. evacuated some members of the Army of the Republic of Vietnam, but many other ARVN members never made it out, including Luyen Zhou. He was based in Da Nang. Every day, he passed by the barrels containing a chemical now considered the most persistent toxin known, a chemical that takes decades to degrade. He was told they were pesticides and mosquito repellent. I did not know about Agent Orange at all. Throat cancer has since robbed him of his health and voice. And two of his seven children are mentally handicapped. Joe suspects Agent Orange is the culprit for his cancer and his children's disabilities. Former ARVN officers are the forgotten victims, getting little or no assistance from Vietnam's communist government and abandoned by the U.S. Not only me, all the people my age who fought with the U.S., all of us were left behind. It's the most contentious issue remaining from the war. The U.S. government has allocated $9 million for victim assistance and cleanup in Vietnam, but contends there's no concrete evidence proving Agent Orange harmed to the Vietnamese. Yet in this country, the Department of Veterans Affairs gives compensation to U.S. veterans exposed to Agent Orange. This is all the officers. Veterans like former Army Major Burton Keith in San Jose. His area of command was sprayed, but he wasn't concerned back then. We don't think about that. I mean, we were told that we were doing our job. We weren't worrying about a little spray. Four years ago, Keith started worrying. He began having health problems. Type 2 diabetics, and then the other one was uh, prostate cancer. And the VA said that was the result of a Agent Orange. He had surgery to remove the cancer. The ordeal was painful and humiliating for this proud Army man. You know, I had to wear diapers for six months or a year. And uh, I, don't know, I was always crying. After months of frustrating red tape, the VA agreed to pay Keith $3,000 a month in benefits. His ailments are among more than a dozen cancers, nerve and skin disorders, and birth defects the VA considers linked to Agent Orange. But there's no such recognition for those suffering from the toxin in Vietnam. I mean, come on, a lot of those, those guys were fighting just like us, and a lot of them were just civilians out there plowing the field. And suddenly this Agent Orange drops on them, and they are wounded forever. For a fraction of what we spend every day in Iraq, in Afghanistan, we could really clean up Vietnam. Ed Martini is a history professor at Western Michigan University. He's writing a book on the worldwide damage caused by Agent Orange. Americans, Vietnamese Americans, and even some Vietnamese still haven't really put this war to rest. It's a war that just seems to go on and on and on. And this would be a way to really heal, I think, a lot of those wounds of war. And repair a harsh legacy etched into the lives of so many. In Vietnam, Thuy Vu, CBS 5.